Hi everybody, Amy here. Welcome to my channel. Today I am coming to you with week two of the one word collab that I'm doing with Jan's Crazy Life and Tina's Crafty Life. This week the word was leaves. So I decided to do something different. This is something that I wanted to do for a long time. I wanted to try the eco printing of the of leaves and paper. So I chose to use the watercolor paper from the Dollar Tree. This is the um, only paper that I've tried so far. Uh, I did throw in a couple of book pages with the first batch that I made and I didn't like the way it turned out. So the second batch that I did, I excluded the book pages and I'll show you why in a minute. So, um, the reason why I did this project was so that I um, I want to start kind of building up my papers before the leaves change colors. So I wanted to get a jump start on that before all the leaves started changing colors so that I could get, you know, most of the, um, the pigment, I guess, out of the leaves before they started to die off. So what I did was for the first, let's just take a look at the first batch because the first batch didn't turn out that great, and I will explain why. Because the ink from the book pages, as you can see, just didn't really do much to the paper. But you can see a little bit of the leaf impression, the leaf impressions, and but not. It wasn't the look I was going for, and I think it's because of. Um, because I used the book pages too. I threw the book pages in there and I think the ink just did something weird to it. I don't know, but you can barely see the leaf impressions, but I'm still gonna use these. I could still put them in a junk journal. Um, you know, like here you can kind of see the leaf shape a little bit. I wanted it to be more visible for you to actually see the leaf impressions a little bit better. but. The other thing that I did was I went out to my garage before um, I started the boiling process and I looked in an old toolbox and found some, this one turned out pretty good. I looked in the toolbox and found some old rusty nails and I did throw them in the boiling pot of water as well. So that's how the first batch turned out. So I wasn't too thrilled with this batch. But I'm not going to throw this paper away. I could still use this in some journals for myself, you know, and, and just kind of play around and see what happens. This, this was my first trial, and I just thought I would share with you. Um, as I'm learning new techniques, I will share them with you as much as possible. The second batch that I did, I am much happier with, okay? You guys are just going to, you'll see the difference. The only thing that I did differently with this batch is I did not put any book paper in there. And I threw in two jalapeno peppers from my garden. Uh, I saw that Shannon Green had thrown in some of her avocado peels. And I thought, oh, that might add a little bit more pigment or color um, to the paper or somehow react to the leaves in the paper that might give me a better image. So I did the same exact thing. I just excluded the book pages and added a couple jalapeno peppers. <laughs> um, but I <clears throat> boiled it the same amount of time and you will be able to see the huge difference. So that is how that turned out. Isn't that cool, you guys? I'm very, very pleased with how these turned out. So I'm not sure if it is the book pages that did it to the other batch or if it's the jalapeno pepper that, you know, helped assist with this. So I think I might try it again without the jalapeno pepper just to see if, you know, that is what makes a difference or not. And I will let you know. Aren't these cool, you guys? So, um, so over the next couple of weeks, before the leaves start to change color, I'm going to go ahead and, and play around and see, you know, what 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 kind of color reactions I can get doing different various techniques, you know, or 
um, maybe throwing different, maybe not putting vegetables in the next time or the next time putting in, you know, like add co different color vegetables. I'm just not sure yet. But I, I'm, I, I just think that they turned out really pretty. I love how they turned out. Uh, I think they're going to look really cool in a junk journal. And I'm super excited to make a little journal with these. Here you can see a little bit of the green pigment. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm going to try different techniques um, and just kind of keep track of what works best. Isn't that neat? I just love how it turned out. So cool. So we'll see. We'll see what I can come up with over the next few weeks. And... Um, I just wanted to share that with you. I think what I'm going to do now is um, I also wanted to share a few um, cards. Now, these cards are not cards that I have made, but I thought I could repurpose these cards. These are cards that I received in a swap years ago um, with another card maker, and we just kind of swapped different cards. So I just kind of thought, I do have these stamps, and I thought, well, I can just kind of you know, use these as inspiration myself. So I pulled all of the fall cards out that I could find. I think this is one that I did actually make. And I love this technique. This is the rolling technique where you stamp an image in one color ink pad and then you roll it in a darker color and that's how you get that cool effect. Um, so the other thing is I thought I could repurpose these and make little mini journals out of them. So we're actually going to do that today. And I am going to use this card, I believe, um, because this is one that was not given to me, so I don't mind um, using one that I have made in the past. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little mini journal using some of this paper. But I think, first off, I want to make a score mark to where I can make it just a little bit thicker. So this is about eight and a half. This is your standard card. So this is eight and a half inches long. It, it's a uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. And... Um, so I am going to score at four, and I am going to score at four and a half, and it's going to just hit that little mark right there. And so the purpose of this is just to add a little bit of a spine to the book, and I thought this is a great way to repurpose some of those card samples that I've saved over the years. And this gives me a little bit of a gusset so that um, I can add, sew in some signatures. Okay, so you can see here, I've got a little bit of a gusset. Um, and this is, you know, coming up a little bit, so I may have to glue that. Next, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna cut another piece of paper that is half an inch wide and five and a half inches in length just for a little bit extra um, support in the spine there. And I had a piece of scrap paper handy, and I am just going to mark it at the five and a half. I'm not even gonna take my scissors. I'm just gonna rip it. Because honestly, my scissors is buried <laughs> in my desk somewhere. So let's just see here. You're not you're not gonna see this. Oh here is here it is. Okay, awesome. So I will just kind of clean this up a little bit. So I'm gonna glue this on the inside here. All of my glue is getting low. <laughs> This isn't going to be too perfect because this isn't going to be a gift for anybody. This is just kind of like, I always try to make a sample. I think we all probably kind of do that. You know how the first project 
doesn't always turn out. It's not something that you want to give to anybody. Okay, so that helps a little bit. That's giving me a little bit of a gusset, <clears throat> as you can see. And I'm having a little issue with this paper here. So I think what I'm going to do is I am just going to trim that off. I have a problem altering cards that I receive from other people. So um, <laughs> I do like to use them as inspiration to create my own. There, so that worked out good. Okay. So I didn't cut, it gives me, as you can see, just a, like a half inch gusset. Oops. Um, and I'm not worried about that because I can cover that up later. So here we just have, oh, I got that wet. Oh, wow. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the eco paper and I'm going to use the pages that I didn't care for. I'm going to keep the good pages for other projects. And I am just going to fold them in half. <clears throat> and like I said, these are 5 by 7 And I don't care about the rips because this is just going to be like a little mini junk journal. Just, you know, for play. And we're just going to fold all these sheets in half. Let's see how many I can get in there. There's four. I think I'm just going to make this one signature for the sake of the video. That one's kind of different. This one turned out pretty good as well, so I think I'll set that one aside. But all these other ones that didn't really have an impression. Let's see, I want to get, I think, about eight sheets. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We will do one more. There. Okay, so there are eight sheets in there. All right, so now what I want to do <clears throat> is I am going to take and put these all inside of each other like this just to create my signature. And you can see as you're doing this, you're getting that rough edge, which I don't really care about. I want this to be kind of rugged looking on the inside. So I, I'm not going to trim that off, but you could. You could certainly take, um, if you've got a heavy duty paper cutter or paper trimmer, you could certainly um, do that or cut it off, trim it off, or you could just leave it like so. So then when I put it in the book here, or in, in the card, you can see how much room I have. So I've got quite a bit of room this way, and I've got quite a bit of room this way. So I'm actually going to trim the card down a little bit, okay? So I think what I'm going to do is just trim a quarter inch off of each end. So we'll go this way. Actually, yeah. Gonna put it in at the quarter inch mark. Cut that off there. And do the same thing on this side. This is a brand new trimmer. I've only had it for a couple months, and I've used it so much I already need a new blade. You can see how it's roughing up the edges there. I don't like that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the same thing on the end. I'm going to take off about a quarter of an inch on each end. And 
Now, because it's going through several different layers, it's going to be a little bit more tricky to cut that. See how you can see that? Um, I probably should have cut it before I put the, you know, extra base in there, but I didn't. <laughs> and then we're going to take and trim off on this end. So I, I really don't care about this one because like I said, it's just a practice one and this is a card that I made but never finished. <clears throat> okay. So then we're going to go ahead and go back to these signature, the signature and see how it fits in there. Okay. That's pretty good. I mean, it could stand to take off a little bit more on the end. So I might just do that real quick. Now, see how that goes. There. So that, that fits pretty good. Like that. So it's just a cute little book. Alright. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to find the center here. And I had purchased several months ago a little kit off of Amazon. This is a little book binding kit. This thing is awesome. It came with everything. It came with needles, curved needles, four different colors of wax linen thread, um, a dowel, it came with a stipple brush, a scissors, clamps, the pokey tool, an exacto knife, and a thimble, a ruler, and I think it was like $14.99, you guys. So I thought this was a great, great deal. Then what I usually do, I have an old book here that um, I use book pages out of. I had used the cover for something else. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not going to measure with this one because, you know, like I said, it's not a gift for anybody. So I, I really don't care if it turns out kind of wonky. So normally if I was going to make a journal to give to somebody, I would really take the time to do the measuring. So I'm just going to get it in the center there and I am going to clamp the pages, one in each corner. And I'm not even going to measure the holes. I am just going to try my best to poke in the center. And then leave a little bit of room up on top here and a little bit of room on the bottom. Okay, so now I've got my holes to my signature. Then I'm going to take the cover and I'm going to insert it in the center here. Here, let's take that off. Like so. I want to try to get it in the center the best I can. Let's see how that's going to work. Here, let's do it this way. And I'm just going to take and I'm just going to slide it in, eyeball it to where the center of that spine is, right where that little fold is there. Okay. And we're just going to measure it as best as I can and I am just going to use the marks here just to kind of make a little mark there so that's good enough for me like I said this isn't going to be a gift for anybody um, I will be making more of these though these will be fun little happy mail gifts as well. Okay, so we're just going to set that inside there like that. And then I'm going to take some wax linen thread. I think I'll use this. And I'm going to do two lengths of the card and just kind of add a little bit extra and just chop that off. Finding needle that is going to work. Like I said, there's curved needles and then they've got different size straight edge needles. And I think this size is a good one. 
this is a great kit. If I can find the Amazon link, I will put it in the description box below. But um, now I'm just going to thread my needle. Okay. And I'm just going to go through the center. I'm not even going to keep these clamped together. And go through the center of my spine. And pull it through. And as I pull it through, I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and just kind of make sure that it is centered in the middle of the book there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come back through the top and through all of these pages here. This is very, like I said, this is just going to be thrown together. And then I'm going to go back through this original center and out this spine. I'm going to hang on to that, pull it through. And then here's where I kind of want to manipulate it a little bit. I'm going to close that, make sure I've got these two corners good. And you see how that is, is like that. I want to make sure I pull that tight. Okay. And then I'm going to go through the bottom here and up through the bottom holes. So sometimes you kind of do got to do them one by one. There we go. And then pull it. Okay, so now at this point is where you want to pull it taut and make sure that you've got it pretty centered so it's not hanging off the bottom or hanging off the top. Like that. And I am just going to put my needle through this top part and then tie it. I'm going to make it a double knot. And then I am going to trim this like that. Okay. So there, I have a cute little book where I have repurposed an old greeting card. Here's the back. Now you can do it to where you have the tie come out the side if you wanted to, and then you could dangle beads. Um, but yeah, it's just a cute little book, you guys, with all this fun eco-dyed paper in there. And, you know, you could use this for anything, collaging, writing, journaling, I mean, whatever you want it to. Um, I could paint over the cover on the back. I can, you know, cover this up on the spine here with some jummies or some beads or something like that. So I just thought this would be a fun, quick project to do. Um, I really enjoyed playing around with the um, the paper and doing the, the technique to where you, you know, eco diet. And also it was a great way for me to repurpose an old greeting card that I had made and, and never sent to anybody. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching you guys. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.